Let's commit them that they will reach here safely in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, I'm there in the midst. Let's pray for more dimension of the Holy Spirit this evening. It's not as if God is not here, but you know, every time we gather at his feet, we long for more, more blessings, more dimension of his, of his blessings. Let's pray that God, tonight's service will be different from every other service we've attended. Tonight will be different. That the, tonight's service will make a difference in our individual lives in the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth and pray for more dimension of the Holy Spirit that tonight's service will be unique. God will bless us. God will give us every of our heart desires that our coming here tonight will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that the Holy Spirit will attend to our individual needs as the word of God is coming out this evening from the mouth of his servant. Let's pray that the, Lord, the word of God will meet our individual needs in the name of Jesus. That the word of God will come like a hammer and break every obstacles and break every evil out of our heart in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that God will bless us in a special way this evening in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you bless me in a special way. Bless me, O oh God, in a special way. Open my eyes to another dimension of you in the name of Jesus. Give us insight into your word in another unique way tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Tonight's service will not just be like a regular service. Let there be difference, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let's be expectant this evening. You can open your mouth and tell God what you want God to do for you. Anytime we come to the presence of God, let's have an expectation. Let it be that we are not just coming for coming sake. Father, we pray tonight that our coming here will not be in vain. In the name of Jesus, we will be blessed. In the name of Jesus, we will not just come from our home and go back empty-handed. Tonight's blessing will be a tonight's service will be a blessing to every one of us. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's commit God's servant into His hands. Let's pray that God will use Him mightily for us. That He will not speak of His own wisdom. Let's pray for more anointing, more auction, more, more, more strength, more power. Father, we pray for your servant you are going to use tonight, O oh God. We ask that you fill him up, O oh God. We ask that you use him mightily for us. Use him, O oh God, to bless us in the name of Jesus. We ask that he will not speak of his own wisdom. We ask that the Spirit of God will speak through him in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that you fill him with power with more anointing, with more options in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for choir. Let's pray for every instrument that God is going to use tonight, that it shall be to our blessings in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for every verse we are going to use in this service. We ask that you fill them and use them mightily, O oh God, for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for tonight's service. Let's open our mouth and thank God because... We know that we are going to be blessed this evening. Father, we bless you, O oh God, for yet another great time in your presence. Thank you so much for the blessings, O oh God, that we come our way this evening. We give you glory. We give you all the praise. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's get my hands together to Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God is good and his mercy and just forever. Memorial, he has not changed. He's still God. He's still God of all flesh. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Give God praise in the house this evening. Let's begin to thank God for his goodness. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for even when we are weak, he makes us strong. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we're praying. Amen. <laughs> Yesterday, today, forever Nobody is like you You never change Yesterday, today, forever Nobody loves me like you Oh, you are the same Yesterday 
said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word, and you are not. you gave, we have overcome, the church and the queen said for life, oh, and you gave, was a right to your holy name, the center of power and strength, there is nothing you can He's a mighty God. He's a great God. He alone deserves our worship. He alone deserves our praise. Nothing exists without God. In the beginning was the world. The world was with God. The world was God. The sin was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him, and nothing was made that was not made by him. 
In him is life, and that life is the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and darkness does not comprehend it. There was a man sent by God. His name is John. He is not the light, but he was sent to make to give witness to the light. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many that receive him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God. They are not born of the will of man or by blood, but by God. And this word became flesh. And it dwelt among us. And we beheld this glory as of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. We bless you, Jesus. We honor you today. All things were made by you and for you. All things. There is nothing we have that we did not receive. And that is why there is no room for boasting. Because all we have, we receive from him. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Receive our praises. Receive our thanksgiving today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, we have worshipped. Uh, lift up your hands above your head and let's put them together in celebration of our Lord and Maker, Jesus. Uh, help me go to someone today. Welcome him or her. Tell him that I'm glad you made it so service today. Leave your seat. Leave your seat. Go welcome someone. Leave your seat. Go welcome someone. Tell him or her I'm glad you made it. I'm happy you are part of this service. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is my pleasure to welcome you into God's presence today. In the name that is above every other name, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if you are connected online, we greet you specially in the name of our Lord Jesus. And we welcome you to Bible study. I have no doubt in my heart that the Lord will minister to everyone, whether you are online or on site. And you will not remain the same in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. Before I begin to teach, I want to remind us what the Bible says. The Bible tells us clearly that it is the entrance of the world that brings light and gives understanding to the simple. And we need to understand the dynamics or how it works. It simply says the entrance, the entrance. The Bible doesn't say it is the world that brings light. Now, if you say that, will it be correct? Yes, but that's not exactly what the, what the scripture says. The scripture simply says that it is the entrance of the world. So the world must have access into your heart if it is ever going to produce result. Is somebody hearing me today? You can sit under the world every day, be in church, and if your heart is never open to receive the word, you'll be shocked that nothing will change in your life. There is no magic about the things of God. It is the word you receive that produces results in your life. In the years I've been a pastor, I've seen people who take the word for granted, who just think that what matters is to pray, what matters is to praise. 
They all have their places. Praise is powerful. Prayer is powerful. But if you are not giving attention to the word, you will be ignorant of your right. You won't even pray a right. Your prayer will be, you'll be praying wrongly because you lack knowledge, because you are ignorant. And the Bible says that God's people are destroyed. Not because there are new strains of demons that cannot be handled by the authority in the name of Jesus, but simply because a lot of believers, they prefer to stay ignorant. Now, without any attempt to knock any congregation, there are things you see that happen in the name of church. And I'm shocked that you look at those places, they are packed full. And you cannot but look at what they do and you laugh. The question I ask is, how do people sit in, that, in those places? The answer is ignorance. So I encourage you tonight, wherever you are, open your heart and receive it. Amen? You see, God's word is not like when you go to lecture room and you argue and debate it. God's word is meant to be believed and received. And then when you receive it, the mystery, the power that is in the world is released into your life. Amen. All right. Bow your head and pray. Talk to God. Ask him to minister to you today. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sit at your feet once again. To be taught by you. Thank you for what you will do today. Thank you, Lord, because the heart of everyone under the sound of my voice is open to receive the engrafted word that is able to save our soul. We bless your name, Father. We honor you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. And we covenant that the praise, the honor, and the adoration for all that shall be done here today is ascribed to you in you alone. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, we are going to continue in our study of the subject of grace. And this evening, the title of this teaching is, There is Grace for Every Need. There is grace for every need. Let me say it to your neighbor this morning. Say, this evening rather, tell him, uh, there is grace for every need. Shout it, let him, let him hear you very well. There is grace for every need. The implication of that is whatever need there is in your life, God has made provision for it. Our God is a generous God, and he has made provision for every need in your life. Is that not wonderful? For every need, not some of them. There is no need in your life today, as you are seated here, as you are listening to me, there is no need that Christ hasn't made provision for. Hallelujah. He has made provision for every need. And that is why knowledge is important. When we have knowledge, then we don't struggle in our relationship with him. Somewhere in John chapter 8, Jesus said in verse 30 there, he said, if you continue in my word, continue. You don't hear it once and you think you know everything. You continue in the word. You see, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples and you will know the truth. Verse 32, you will know the truth, 
and the truth you know will set you free. There is power in the, in the truth to break yokes in our lives. Simply becoming aware of who you are, becoming aware of the truth, just simply sets you free. That is what the Bible means when it says in James chapter 1, verse 21, I'm just laying foundation. It says, therefore, lay aside all filthiness. James chapter 1, verse 21. He said, therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the engrafted word that is able to save your souls. Are you seeing that? What does the word do? It means that the word can be grafted into your heart. Those of us who did a Greek back then in school, you understand how a particular species of plant can be grafted onto another. Let me not go there. But it says the, there's the grafted word is able to save your souls. The question you ask yourself, but you're already saved. Is that right? Is that not right? But you must understand that you are made up of, of three parts. You are a trapezoid being. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. When you become born again, you become born again in your spirit. Your body is not born again. That is why your height doesn't change simply because you are born again. Are we together? Your height remains the same. Your face doesn't change. You are the same physically. Also, in your soul, your soul is the realm of the mind, the realm of your emotion. That's where the soul is. The soul houses the mind. It houses the human will. It houses your emotions. None of us get saved in that place. But if you are going to leave a successful Christian life, then you must allow what the Bible says to happen to your soul. The Bible says, what saves your soul now is the word of God. And that is the same thing he's saying in Romans 12 verse 2 when he says, be ye not conformed to this world. In other words, don't, don't behave, don't reason like this word, you see, be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Remember I said the mind is in the realm of the soul. Amen? So when you said the soul, it houses the mind, it houses the human will, it houses your emotion. And so when the scripture then says be renewed in your mind, it means that something has to change in your mind. You can carry over the thinking pattern that you had in the world into the kingdom and expect that you get result. That is why he says the engrafted word is able to save your soul. Save your soul from wrong thinking. Save your soul from wrong attitude, from emotional baggage that you have been carrying. Some people cannot even, have, they are never happy. They are sad 24-7. Something needs to happen in their soul. When something happens in their soul, they will begin to rejoice because the Bible tells us rejoice always. And I say unto you again, rejoice. It, until you take in that word and allow it to walk in your soul and then it, it affects your mind, it affects the way you reason, it affects your emotion. You will still be struggling. Emotionally, you will be, be struggling with your imagination. Remember what it's written in Third John. I know someone needs to hear this before we dive into the real thing. He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Third John. I wish above all things. Is that it, it actually means I pray that thou mayest what? Prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospered. Please, can we have that scripture very quickly? Okay. The elder unto the world beloved girls whom I love in the truth. Next verse. Beloved, I wish above all 
to him that thou mayest prosper and be in health. How? Can we read it very loud? Even as thy soul, what? Prospereth. Do you know what that means? Everything that will manifest, even your health, your prosperity, what does it start from? Your soul. And this agrees, is, is a principle of life. If you are poor in your mind, you will be poor in your hands. There is a connection between your mind and your hands. Hallelujah. So, success does not start outwardly. It begins inwardly. And that's what the Bible is saying. That, listen, you prosper as your soul prospers. Does that make sense to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? And that is why we must educate our mind. Don't allow weed to grow in your mind. If you rely only on your hands, you won't go too far in life. But when there is a combination between your hands and your mind, nothing can stop you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm trying to show you why you must open your heart to receive the word. Receive the word. Receive the word. Praise the Lord. All right, let me take my foundation scripture of this evening. Second Corinthians 9 verse 8. It says, I'm reading the New King James Version. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That simply tells us that our God is a God of all grace. First Peter 5, 8 to 10. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood and the world. But may the God of all grace, again you see that phrase. He is a God of all grace, that is why he can make all grace available. But the God of all grace who had called us into his internal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and set to you. My God will perfect everything that concerns you. He will cause you to be established, and he will set to you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I've said before that God has made provision for every need in our lives. Hallelujah. And so when you look at society today, not only in Nigeria, um, there, is, there is something that is happening that is almost beyond um, the, what experts can handle. The inflation rate is, is troublesome. And make no mistake about it, it is not peculiar to Nigeria. It is happening everywhere. Hallelujah. Uh, I spoke with a friend who is in UK yesterday, and he told me that, yes, things may appear bad here, but no one, no one is excluded, even outside here. The cost of living has gone so high. I read somewhere, I think it was in US, no, it's even UK, that the number of people who are hopeless, who sleep on the street, had increased why? Because there are people who lose their accommodation and they cannot get accommodation. They lose their jobs. There are people who cannot stay because sometimes we think Nigeria is the worst place. There are people that if they are out of jobs for one month, they are in trouble. Because they live from pay to pay. So, for you a believer, what ought to be your attitude? Our attitude as believers should be that of rest. Help me turn to your neighbor and say, rest. Say to him again, rest. And many of us know that worries don't produce result. Worries make things worse. And so what God wants his own children to do is to rest. You can't afford to um, behave like every, every other person out there. Why should I rest? Because I have hope. I have hope. Somebody say, I have hope. What is my hope? My hope is Jesus. 
My hope is that as long as no power could keep Jesus from rising from the grave, somehow my need shall be met. It is hope in Jesus that in difficult times I will not be ashamed. Our hope is that the scripture will be fulfilled in our lives. And hope for the believer is a confident expectation of good. It's a confident expectation that things will turn around in my favor. I may not understand how it will happen, but I'm hopeful that the word of God will not fail. And so I can rest. It doesn't look as if things will work out, but I rest. I'm not resting in my ability. I'm not resting in my connection. I'm resting in what God said. Somebody say, I'm resting in what God said. No, no, shout it loud. Say, I'm resting in the word of God. If God says it, I believe it, that's what you see. That is how to rest. If you read the book of Philippians, chapter 4, from verse 6, can we put it up? It says, be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. The word be careful for nothing means don't be anxious. But in everything, somebody say in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, what should you do? Let your request be made known unto God. Then what happens? Verse 7. And the peace of God. Whose peace? Whose peace? The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. This is what happens to you when you rest. And you deliver yourself from high blood pressure. And so people will be asking you, how are you coping? I remember my doctor has asked me once, hey, Pastor, how come your, your BP is always stable? Uh, pastors have a lot to bother about, to worry about. And I said, me, I know they worry. Hallelujah. Am I the one building the church? If it doesn't build it, I can't build it. Hallelujah. Do I have issues in my life? I have. But I'm smart enough to know that carrying the burden on my head doesn't take away the pain. In fact, the pain increases when you carry it. Is it not Christ that says, cast your burden upon him for he cares for you? What it simply means is rest. Don't be anxious. Don't lie down in the bed and you can't sleep. Now, the question I ask me, some people go say, but how person no go think? Somebody, you are saying right. So, Pastor, you don't even understand. How I no go to think? Look at, look at what I say. I'm not asking you not to think. But rather than think about the problem, focus on what God's word said. Did you hear what I'm saying? The principle of meditation and worry are the same. If you know how to worry, then you can meditate. Hello? And the, the thing is this, anything you worry about grows bigger than it is actually is. And anything you meditate upon also positively also grows bigger. So why don't you meditate on what God said? Because that is our hope. When you meditate on the word of God, what happens is that your hope will spring up. Somebody say, my hope is springing up. My hope is springing up. Because I know that the word of God has no margin for error. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will not pass away. There is no hope if I don't have God's word to stand upon. Hallelujah. My hope is built on nothing else. You remember that, that hymn. But Jesus' blood and righteousness. He said, I dare not stand on any other thing. And then the cross is that on Christ, what? The solid rock I stand. Every other ground 
a shifting sand. When you stand on the word of God, you are standing on solid ground. It doesn't matter what happens, you will not be swallowed up. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You see, we know, there are things we know. Let me read a few scriptures for you. Let me preach to your neighbor, rest in the word of God. Psalm 56 verse 9. It says, when I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. Psalm 56 verse 9. The part that I love there is the last part. He says, I, for this I know. Why do I know? He said, God is for me. I may not know too many things, but I know one thing. God is for me. And, and he says, so this is my hope. This is my surety. That no matter how bad my situation is, when I cry to God, what happens? He will hear me. And so I know whatever I'm facing today will turn around because God is for me. Child of God, do you know God is for you? Do you know that? I ask you, how do you know? Come on, talk to me. How do you know that God is for you? Huh? The scripture says so. Jesus is an indication that God is for you. Amen. Romans 8 verse 31. He said, when, okay, let, let's, let's pick it up from verse 29. Romans 8 from verse 29. Romans 8 verse 29. He said, he that for whom he did for no. Are you saying that? Before you were born, he knew about you. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate. My life is a predetermined outcome. It's already settled before I was born. For whom he did know, he did for no, for no, he did also predestinate to be conformed. How? To the image of his son. So if Jesus did not fail, I will not fail. Because my, my ultimate purpose, my ultimate target is to be made conformable to the image of Christ. As he is, so am I. Hallelujah. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. What happens? Them he also called. And whom he called, them he also what? Justified. Somebody say, I've been justified by the blood. And he says, and whom he justified. What happens? Them he also glorified. Can you find yourself in that place? You are called by God unto glory. And God has justified you. And he has glorified you. Now listen. Everything may not be the way you want it right now. But the implication is that you are standing on a glorious ground. You are standing in the arena of glory. It is what you believe that matters. Because whatever you are seeing today is subject to change. The only thing that cannot change is what God has said. It is your situation, your circumstance that will bow to, your, to the word of God. So whatever you are seeing today is in material. Keep confessing that you are dwelling in glory. Keep confessing that the glory of God shall be seen in your life. You are not a candidate for shame because God has not called you to shame. Hallelujah. And then in verse 31, God asked a rhetorical question. He said, what shall we then say to these things? In other words, in the light of what has just been revealed, what is our conclusion? Here is our conclusion. If God be for us, who can be against us? And because we know that God is for the believer, that is why we say nothing works against the believer. You, you got to believe this. The enemy will always jump on your shoulder and tell you everything is working against you. Who told you? Everything is working in your favor. Say amen. 
this is, see, the, the true repentance that needs to happen is to think in line with what God says. Have you not read in the scripture, in verse 28 of this same scripture, verse 28, Romans 8, 28, he said, and we know. Listen, you must learn to operate from the point of knowing. We know. I'm not guessing it. I'm not praying. I know it. So if I know it, what should I do? It is no longer a prayer point. I thank God because I know it will turn out like that. And we know. Somebody say, I know. I know. I may not know too many things. I don't know everything, but I know this one. Not all things. How many things? All things. All things. What do they do? Read it loud. No, 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 no. I want us to start again. One, two, let's go. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Your assignment is to keep loving the Lord. Because all things right now are working together for your good. So what should be my response? I thank God on a daily basis. Because I know he has made provision for every need in my life. Wake up in the morning and thank God. Declare your expectation. Declare what you want to see. Speak what you desire to see. When Jesus declared in the book of John, 19, John 19, 30, when he was on the cross, he said it is finished. What was he saying? He was simply saying that the price has been paid. Every need had been satisfied. Every need had been met. The requirement of justice had been satisfied. Every need had been met in Christ. And that is why verse 32, go back to that place, verse 32 of Romans 8 says, He that did not, Romans 8, 32, If God did not spare or withhold, he that spared not his own son, what did he do? He gave him up. How shall he not? Also, freely give us all things. There is no need in your life that doesn't fall into that neighborhood of all things. All things. All things. He that spared not. So, if, let me try and break this down the way, what it means. Let's assume that um, of all the things that you need in life, for the purpose of illustration, let's assume that we put them on a gradation, the easy ones, the difficult ones, the most difficult ones. Are we together? Now, God is simply saying, remember, I'm just using this for the purpose of illustration. There is nothing too hard for God to do. Is that right? But if we look at it from the human standpoint, I'm trying to break down that, that scripture. That if he spared not his only begotten son, but gave him up, how will he not also freely give you all things? In other words, the hardest part is to release Jesus. Is it making sense to you? The hardest part, the big part of it, is to release Jesus. If you release Jesus, if you did not withhold Jesus, there is nothing. There is nothing. Nothing will be withheld from you. If you did not withhold Jesus, just settle it in your heart that all things are yours. If you did not withhold Jesus, if he, if he took his son through the pain that he went through on the cross and the son said it is finished, settle it in your heart. Settle it in your heart. This is where revelation comes in. And this revelation must affect the way you think. 
Stop thinking lack. Stop thinking that you will end badly. Stop thinking that you are going to be disgraced. Stop thinking that you are going to end on a bad note. Begin to declare that your story will end well. Because, not because you are so connected. Not because you have access to everywhere in the nation. But because of the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ. There are things that will work for you. Our God is a God of all grace. And is going to make all grace available to you. Your financial needs shall be met. Your emotional needs shall be met. The need in your career shall be met. Whatever is a need... God has made provision for you to enjoy it in Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Put on the screen. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Or oh, let's have it from verse 9. John. The gospel according to St. John. You can start with um, the King James Version. After that, we'll look at um, New Living Translation. After that, we'll look at the, P, um, the, the TPT. I am the door. Who is speaking? Who is speaking? That's not what I want to hear. Jesus is the one speaking here. Hallelujah. Amen. It says what? I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Hallelujah. And shall go in and out and find what? What does pastor represent here? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He says that, listen, if you enter into the kingdom through me, of course, there is no other way. He say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Is that not right? So he say, I'm the door. If you want to come into the kingdom, you, go, you come through me. But here is the deal. That once you are saved... What happens? You will go in and out. That speaks of liberty. Is that right? And you will find pasture. Pasture speaks of, you know, the need. You know, sheep, wherever they feed, that place is called pasture. Is that right? Is that correct? It leadeth me beside the green pasture. And it says that in Christ, the sheep will find what? Oh, you're not somebody, you're not with me. He said you will find what? In other words, every need shall be met. Because for every need in your life, grace has been made available. I don't know about you, I will find pasture. Even as, I, as I'm teaching in the thing, they enter my bone. I will find pasture. What it means is this, I will not starve. My seed will not beg bread. Somehow, my need shall be met. Every believer must think like this. I didn't write it. He says, if you come to Jesus, you will be saved. And then you can go in and out. That speaks of liberty. You are no more in bondage. You have been set free from every satanic bondage. And he says, you will find pastor. Hallelujah. I will find pastor. Kaboli brahadaba. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack. I will not lack any good thing. If that thing is a good thing, it is yours. Hallelujah. Have you forgotten what the Bible says? In Psalm 34 verse 10. He says, the young lion will lack and go hungry, but they that serve the Lord, they that seek the Lord, shall not lack or want any good thing. Do you find yourself in that scripture? Why don't you believe it? We believe to see, we don't see to believe. We walk by faith, not by sight. Things around us are saying it won't work, but we are saying it will work. What is our confidence? Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is my confidence? Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. We are in heaven. Not in Abuja. Not in Alausa. So it cannot be overruled. And God is not a respecter of persons. All I need to do is to stand on the word of God. Now, verse 10. Verse 10, John 10, 10. So he said, I will find pasture. Then look at the next thing he says.
John 10.10. 10. Thank you. God bless you. The thief. Who is the thief? Who is the thief? Oh, what does he come to do? To kill and to destroy. A threefold ministry. But Jesus said, I have come. Is that right? I am come. Present continuous. He's always coming. Anytime the enemy rises against you, Jesus will show up for you. Hallelujah. He said, I come that they might have life. How? No, scantily. Is that what the Bible says? Just barely get by. Struggle through life. Is that what it says to you? He said, he came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. This tells us, ladies and gentlemen, that Christ paid the price for us to enjoy abundance. Thou anointest my head with oil. What happens? My cup runs over. That is our portion in Christ. Your cup will run over with abundance. Your cup will run over with favor. Your cup will run over with breakthrough. Because the oil of God is upon your life. Because of what Christ did for you. There will be rivers in your desert. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now give me the new, the new living translation. Just this verse 10. The new living translation. For those of us who are in service. Verse 10. Oh. Verse 10. Okay. I'd like us to stand and read it together. The thief's purpose is what? What is Christ's purpose? No, okay, now don't use that um, third, third person plural. Use personal pronoun. Say, Christ's purpose is to give me a rich and satisfying life. If you believe this scripture, lift up your hand. Put it sit down. I want you on your own, meditate on the scripture. The price has been paid for me to have a rich and satisfying life. Do you know one thing that occupies my mind? The more I read the scripture, the more I encounter things that I feel that are not yet manifest in my life. And I'm hungry to see them manifest. I don't want to get to heaven and I'm told, son, you didn't even scratch the things I made available for you. Do you know that a lot of us believers will live far below God's provision for us? Because I look at this scripture, the question we ask is it, is the scripture true? If it's true, then we need to continually meditate in this word. It's not really about what you do. It's about first you believe this above every other thing you have believed. You need to knock out some things. The strongholds that we have built or the enemy has built in our minds over the years. The stronghold of average. Do you know that, I don't know about you, but sometimes when we started Christianity, we were just satisfied with give me heaven, take everything. Are you familiar with that? Even up to today, some people think that lack, poverty, is synonymous with holiness. And so when you see people that are successful, you don't consider them Christians. Am I not speaking to somebody? <laughs> but Abraham was very rich. Yet, he was a friend of God. What about David? If riches were to be sinful, then we should ask, why did God bless Solomon so much? You can do much, you can do more good with riches than with poverty. We are going out on Saturday. 
did we go to steal the thing we are going to give to them? Some of you ought to bring. You didn't bring because you don't have to bring. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is it a sin if you load, if you, 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 you load one lorry load of rice and you go and share it to others? God says, I want you to have a rich and satisfying life. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, thank you for giving me a rich and satisfying life. Give me the, the Passion Translation, a rich and satisfying life. That is what you must desire. You will be fulfilled in every area of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be fulfilled. And so when I, when I, when I spoke about rest at the beginning, I'm saying to you, rest in what God has promised. Rest in what he has spoken, knowing that it will come to pass. Hallelujah. A thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I've come to give you everything. How? Oh, you are not excited this evening the way I am. He came to give me everything. How? In abundance, more than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. Your expectation must be aligned with what God said. He wants to give you everything in abundance. I've come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And I'm challenging you beginning from today. Let your expectation align with this. Reject lack. Get angry in your spirit when certain things are not working in your life. Get angry. Be angry in your spirit. Be angry. Don't adjust to status quo. Did you hear what I'm saying? Even as inflation is going up, <laughs> it may sound somehow. But be deliberate and say, Lord, my standard of living is not going down. Are you with me? It is easy to say, let me adjust. And then the things I used to eat before, I don't want to eat them anymore. You got to make up your mind that my standard is not dropping. That's how to live by faith. Actually, it is not enough to just confess and say it. We all say, when they, when they say there is a casting down, what do you say? There is a lifting. Then act it out. Act it. Let it affect everything about yourself. In your action, in your thinking, think lifting. Because if you are already adjusting down, now, I'm not speaking against prudence. I'm not speaking against wisdom. I'm not speaking against prudence in financial management. But I'm speaking something about your faith that is very easy to adapt in your mind. I wish it together. As a man thinketh in his heart, what will happen? So easy. Once you begin to go to that point, the way you see things begin to change. But you can also adjust your mind to the other side and begin to believe God. Begin to believe God that your income will increase. You see, on, on the, that night on Friday, we listen to different testimonies. But you know the testimony that inspired me most? It was the testimony of Esther. And everyone can learn something from that testimony. Her testimony wasn't a testimony of making millions. But she spoke about the fact that she had fears in her heart that her children are growing up. And she, she wasn't sure how she would be able to cope. And she began to pray. There are times I'll come to church, I'll see her shouting here at the altar. And he said, something came dropping in her spirit. Why don't you begin to sell water? She bought water. And she was selling pure water. And she said, she saves 10000 weekly. How much is that 
in a month. 40. There are people who are doing contract job in banks who wear tie who can save 40,000 at the end of the month. Do you understand what I'm saying? But how did it happen? She didn't adjust and say, let me just be begging people for money. She was crying to God. I need to go to the next level. And God dropped an idea. And she walked the idea and she got a result. God is not a respecter of persons. He said, the way you think determines what you receive. Once you settle for, I cannot get out of this level, you won't hear anything. But the day you are angry in your spirit and say, Lord, I'm more than this. I want to go to the next level. Trust me, ideas will come. Is somebody with me today? Are you still there? There is no need in your life that Jesus has not paid for. If you don't hear anything, write that down. There is no need that has not been made provision for. That is why our God is a God of all grace. He is a generous God. Too generous to a fault. That whatever you need, he has made provision for it. In Christ, there is provision for your healing. In Christ, there is provision for you to have roof over your head. It doesn't matter how much land is sold in Lagos. Desire to be a landlord. Richard, are you hearing what I'm saying? Change your mind. Become radical in the way you think. It begins with your thinking. Remember what God said about the guys in the book of Genesis chapter 11. They were building tower. And it wasn't, it was outside the will of God. But God took notice and said, this they have begun to do. And nothing shall be restrained from them which they imagine to do. Please put it on the screen for me. Genesis uh, 11, I think, verse 6. What that means is this. Imagination is not from the devil. God gave you imagination so that you can see where you want to go in your mind. You can travel there before you get there. In your mind, begin to see yourself successful. See yourself healed in your imagination. Imagination can either be negative or positive. Is that right? Uh, are you all aware that sometimes, you see, the enemy specializes in putting wrong imagination? Have you seen people who say they have panic attack, they are afraid? It's like they want to die. You know what is happening? There's a negative imagination. He's always seeing himself dead. Always seeing himself not be able, to be able to come out of debt. Things are not working. Check him or her in three weeks. The BP has risen because his imaginations are very wrong. Hallelujah. The enemy will give you he will give you a picture. Bam! Your things are thrown out because you are not able to pay rent. The rent has not even expired though. But in your mind, you have checked everywhere. Say, I'm, I won't be able to pay. And then you are seeing your loans thrown out. You go, that is, if you are not careful, you, you lose your mind. You know why? Wrong imagination. But guess what? Guess what? Every man can determine the type of film they play in their mind. We all play films. So. Hello? We all have imagination. I call it the inner movie that is playing your mind. The inner movie. From, from morning till night, there is a movie in your mind. Hallelujah. If the movie is good, don't let it end at the level of movie. Begin to think, Lord, show me how I can bring that thing to the realm of materiality. Sometimes you rebuke yourself that you are thinking too much of yourself. No. You know, you know why? When you dream to go to, to, the, to the moon and you begin to go there, even if you don't get there, you end up in the stars. I wish it together. But if, you, if your dream is here, it will never go beyond here because as you think, so you will be. Let's begin to align our mind with what God said. Meditate on the scripture 
day and night. Look into the scripture and find out what he has said about you. Remember, God's word ought to create pictures in your mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The word of God should create vision, should create pictures in you. When he said the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree and grow like the cedar of Lebanon, that word should create an image in your heart. Sister Vivian, it means this. On no account must you ever accept the thought that you won't do well in life. Will the thought come? Yes. Because the devil is a master at suggestion. He will tell you you will die single. He will die. He will tell you your life will not amount to anything. He will remind you that nobody has ever succeeded in your family. But hear me. If any man be in Christ, what does the Bible say? It's a new creation. All things are passed away and all things have become new. He will tell you there is a curse running in your home. But remind him. When those thoughts come, don't keep quiet. Speak out what you know in the Bible. The Bible says that Christ has redeemed you from the, from the, from the curse of the law. Be made a curse. You know what? Jesus became a cause on your behalf so that you will not be caused. You can't be in Christ and say you are under cause. The fact that it is not working now does not mean it won't work. Grace is available to make it work. Attempt to do something. Hallelujah. I read one book years back and I found a quote. I don't even know where the quote came from but I still remember. It's a Chinese quote. I mean, it's a Chinese um, adage. It said, the shame is not in being born poor, but in not doing anything to improve your status quo. That's where the shame is. That you are born poor, no big deal. A high percentage of successful people in the world were born poor. But it is not a man's background that puts his back on the ground. It is the choices he makes. I'm challenging you today. Change the way you think. Choose in agreement with God's word. You are not the nobody. If you are the only one alive, Christ will still have gone to the cross for you. So why will you look down on yourself? How dare you say you are not worthy? Dump the slave mentality. You are a king. Christ paid the price to make you a king and a priest. Speak as a king and expect what you say to come to pass. Never see yourself as a sinner. It is insult for someone that has been washed clean by the blood of Jesus to say he's a sinner. Have you forgotten what God said to Peter? He said, what God has cleansed, let no man call it unclean. It is God that made you clean. It is God that said you are clean. How dare you look at yourself and say you are unclean? When you see yourself clean, when you see yourself that all your sins are forgiven, then you understand nothing can stand in your pathway. God is not stopping you. Rather, he's working on your behalf. The Holy Ghost is in you. The blood is speaking on your behalf. Favor is over your life because the Bible says that God will bless the righteous and with favor, he will surround him as a shield. Right now, you are surrounded by favor. You must believe it. Anywhere you go, expect favor to speak for you. Next time you go for things, uh, then be bold to knock on doors and ask for people. For us people, let us say, this is what I'm looking for. Expect favor. When you, when you do like that, you will write applications. Uh, you will send out proposals because you expect doors to open for you. Your father owns it all. Gold and silver belong to your father. The earth is the Lord. And what? And the fullness thereof. And the Bible says that you are joined heir with Christ. You have access to everything that belongs to God. And he wants you to have it. He's not putting up with you. He is the God of all grace. He is able to make all grace available. I want you to see every need met in your life. Even if you have had a setback, listen, listen to me. There is a bounce back mechanism in every believer. The righteous falls seven times. What happens? He rises again. In other words, there is no fatal failure for the believer. You fail only when you accept that you are a failure. 
You tried it once, it didn't work. You have merely discovered how it will not work. It is no failure. You knocked on one door. That door refused to open. Don't worry. Leave that door. Go to another one. It shall be well with you. I will hear your testimonies. In the name of Jesus, stand to your feet. Just bless the name of the Lord. If you want to clap, clap for Jesus. You are blessed hearing what you are hearing today. You are blessed hearing what you are hearing. Lift up your hands, worship him, thank him. If you have the language of the spirit, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Le kabo se brekale mosita. Le kerebo se brekale mose. Le ke mundo brekale te se kita kasava. Le brekora hija katara kalabro kosute yila kasa. Le kende le brakoto ri braku basata. Oh Jesus, we bless you. Kale imasada. Ika malate ke se le breku masata yada brakata. Yele gere broka pasato le kere bo shimbraka palike sete. Father, we receive your word. We receive your word. We receive your word. We receive your word. Bate se kete libra kata. We receive your word. We receive your word. Your word will bring forth in our lives. Me sandala kata. Jele bro kere bo shimbra kapote zika labra kata. Ile gere bro kapo sete ke libra kata. Yele gere bro kapaso to libra kasa tayaba. Alabo se kataba se brekele mondo kabra. We honor you. We honor you. We bless you. We bless you. We adore you. In Jesus' name. I want to tell you what the word can do for you if you receive this word and run with it. There was a young man from Adamawa State who was here for some years. If I mention the name, some of you will know him. But what was his testimony? One day he walked to me in the office and said he wanted to thank me for what God has used me to do. I never recall praying for him. But he said he never believed that he can amount to somebody in life. He was a graduate. He had done youth service. But he said sitting under the teaching every day changed something in his mind. And back then, he started a car wash. And until he went back, the car wash was doing well. But he told me that it was based on the things he was hearing, he started believing in himself. Nothing can change a man's word like the word of God. It changes, it, 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 it keeps you, it keeps you in, a, in a realm. You begin to see things differently. What you were not seeing before, you begin to see. You begin to see new possibilities when you receive the word of God. And I pray that the word you have received today will bring forth fruit in your life. In Jesus' name. Lift up your offering. Father, we thank you. Our offerings are lifted up unto you this evening. We ask that you receive us and receive our offering. And let the harvest return to us according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.